So for iCarla 2.0, we have the brand new 2014 Nissan Type, which we've never tested before. And right here, well, this is the Challenger, the brand new 2014 Silverado with the 6.2 liter Big V8, most powerful truck in its class. And of course, Nathan will disagree with me, but I think that this is the returning champion. The Ford F-150 EcoBoost. It has two turbochargers, which help make up for some of the lower air density up here at elevation. So which one will be fastest? We're gonna find out very soon. after we filled it up to get exactly how much? Uh, 10,000 10 pounds. We're here with Mr. Truck and he is filling up the final tank. These three tanks, each one holds how much water? Uh, over 275 gallons, which is about 2,200 pounds a piece. 2,200 pounds a piece. And what we're going to do is also add in these babies. This one weighs about what, 48 about, pounds? About 48 pounds, six gallons. That's right, and then we'll be pulling them up because what we're trying to equal is about 10,000 pounds. Right, total weight of the trailer and the cargo. We decided to up the towing load to 10,000 pounds because, well, 8,000 pounds in the Ike Gauntlet wasn't quite cutting it. We wanted this to be a true test of the truck's power, and a run up the Ike Gauntlet at 60 miles an hour wasn't proving much. Now, we do realize that this does exceed the towing capacity of some of these trucks, but many owners will, on a regular basis, over estimate the amount that their trucks can tow. Once again, excellent little engine. This is a 5.6 liter V8 that has 317 horsepower, but more importantly, 385 pound-feet of torque. It's hooked up to a five-speed automatic transmission, and its maximum towing is 9,500 pounds. So we're gonna go a little bit over that because, well, at least I'm positive this is gonna do it all right. some good crackle to it. I think this sounds the best. So we're measuring from the ground all the way to the top of the bed and the Nissan is at 55 inches. So we're gonna see how far it drops when it gets to the trailer. Ball and tongue is it this the ball is a two and five sixteenths. This is a higher capacity ball than we did in our last gauntlet. The other one used a two inch ball. This is a higher capacity ball we need for the bigger trader to carry that extra weight. We've got it adjusted so that the trader's level. Alrighty. Huh. Look at that. Just a hair over two inches drop. down from the top of the Ike Gauntlet and Nathan how is it done how is the brake feel of this with the aftermarket brake controller because you cannot get one built into this truck which is a shame I'm hoping that Nissan will change that when they have the new generation Titan as it is well the steering can get a little light especially because we're pushing maximum on the tongue weight and everything else but for the most part it's been very competent brakes have so far worked really well they don't feel like they're fading I've been applying the brakes for a good portion of the dip downhill because I didn't want to exceed 60 miles per hour. Um, and believe me, with this much weight behind me, it wants to exceed 60 miles per hour. Ken, you've got your commercial trucker's driver's license. <laughs> so now that we're having some real trucking going on, <laughs> are you worried about this truck? I mean, we are definitely uh, pushing the limits and beyond. And well, beyond. not really. I, I don't know the wheel base on that Ford that we're going to be using, but. You know, shorter wheelbase makes them, the trailers move around more than you know, like a, a Jeep Wrangler with a single door versus a two-door one. Big difference in how they handle. So I think this is going to be the shortest wheelbase truck we're going to use today. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not driving it, but it looks like it's handling well, and that's the big thing. You want a, enough wheelbase, enough weight to handle a 10,000-pound trailer, not let the trailer push you or control you. And to me, it looks like it's doing well. It's doing well. We've upped the gain from what we've done in the past to the trailer, so hopefully we've got enough trailer brake to even everything out. Uh, if not, well, the last thing we want is a runaway. So hopefully we got everything <laughs> yeah, we're, sorted. We're all against runaways. And we're about to find out because we're, we're about at the exit here. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see what the scoop. You can smell it. You can, can smell, smell some it, brakes. Yeah. This thermometer's smoking. It's 538 degrees. 538. 538 on the front. Let's see what we got on the back. It's That's pretty bad. high. Yeah, it's, it's not it's bad not for that, that count. 10,000 pounds. It's not yeah. bad. What we got back here? 412 on the back brakes. 412. Let's see what the trailer is. Still, that's not too bad. No, no. No, I, I think we. Think I think reasonable. we actually. Now that we're at I 2.0, <laughs> we've got it <laughs> dialed in, guys. We've actually figured out how to set the brake controller so that it's appropriating the load between the truck and the trailer in the right amount. And we're and stressing we're, the load in this baby because we are over 500, 500 pounds over its recommended towing weight. No, we're more than that with us in here. Yeah, way more. Oh, uh, yeah. 7% <laughs> yeah. 78 degrees. That's so, bad. Yeah. Not bad. yeah, we're not overworking those trader brakes at all. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, let's have some fun and go up. Yeah. <laughs> Climb the mountain. Yeah. All right, Nathan, I've got the stopwatch. We've got the solo DL set up. The Ike Gauntlet 2.0 is calling our name. Yeah, calling our name and the poor Nissan Titan. All right. I'll start it when we get past the sign, which is where we always start. We're on the on ramp. Now, the solo DL measures 0 to 60, and I don't think we're going to get to 60 this time. So we'll see. Here we go. And pow. The stopwatch has started. So this time, unlike the other times when the trucks overpowered the load, the goal is to see how long it will take us to run the Ike Gauntlet. And we're gonna do it at wide open throttle. And the question is, will you be able to get up to 60 miles an hour before it starts kicking uphill? Bye, Look at that. You're at 60? Ah, don't, <laughs> I can't. I don't know, it's a Cadillac. Ah, I gotta slow down. You son of a... Yeah, I mean, traffic is part of it. This guy would be nice if he got out of your way, wouldn't it? Not that much. <laughs> so the solo DL is not going to help us any because we're in a, over a minute now. What Nissan Titan does have, the other two we have today don't, is towing mirrors. You can pull them out and see what's behind that trailer and turning corners. Great feature to have when you're towing this size of the trailer. All right. We were faster than I thought. Of course, we're in the level part of this. Yep. So we're in the lower part, and you were able to get up to 60, right? Yep. Are you able to maintain 60? Uh, I'm just under it now. Foot's all the way to the floor. Okay. Foot all the way down. Now, this truck does weigh 5,259 pounds, plus we've got a 10,000 pound load, plus we have the three of us in here. So yeah, over 700 pounds inside. Yeah. So we are definitely stressing these vehicles, and you are slowing down, Nathan. Yep, foot's all the way down. Foot's all the way down. We have it in tow haul mode. And um, well, for that schmuck in the Cadillac, I might have actually been able to go a little bit quicker, but oh well. Now, in case you're wondering, the Ike Gauntlet is a true test with this much weight because it goes from Silverthorne, Colorado, which is at, give or take, about 10,000, and up to the Eisenhower Tunnel, which is at 12,000. So we have about 30% less air density, which means we have about... 30% less horsepower, which is substantial. Plus, we have a 7% grade, which is the highest allowable on the U.S. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're actually almost pulling twice what the truck weighs, which is pretty damn impressive. This little yeah. guy is still um, uh, about 53 miles per hour. That's not bad. That's or, really not bad. We're well, passing that truck up there, so we're... That's that thing with the axle ratio on this one. Nissan first came out, which they're still sticking to that same story. The standard one was a 293 to 1, and this one with the package it has is a 3, almost 336, which is fairly high, but according to Nissan, the way they've geared their transmission down, that's supposed to be equivalent to a 410. Whether or not we believe that, I don't know, but it actually is doing well for 10,000 pounds. You're 
about 4,500 RPMs. I'm looking at your MPG, Nathan. What do you got there? 2.9. That's the average. <laughs> that is <laughs> the lowest we've ever recorded, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, but that's not. we're not all the way there yet. So let's see what happens. Maybe we can improve. Yeah, yeah. this truck is giving you all it's got. So yeah, yeah, it certainly is. She's pushing. I know. I know you can. I know you can. It's like a little train. <laughs> Come on. I know you can, Titan. I know you can. Still over 50 miles per hour. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man. It's pulling so much more than it should be pulling, and a lot of you people do that to trucks. So this is real world testing. That's true. Most uh, people, whether they're hauling campers or trailers, uh, there's a large portion of them that are overloaded. Yeah, well, it's funny is that they get a camper that weighs, let's say, 5,000 pounds, right? But then they load another couple thousand pounds worth of stuff in it, and they, they don't think realize that, and they don't think about that. Oh, oh wait, yeah. no, no, it's only 5,000 pounds. That's true. That's why it was such a good idea for that, that, that J standard, that what the J2807, that would have helped us all, help the consumer see what they can really do with those trucks. Gentlemen, we are at four, almost five minutes, and we're not even to the halfway point, so this is much slower than I got in the 1.0. Now, we've already done an interior basic thing when we took this off-road, but with the Nissan Titan, there are a couple things you should know. For one thing, they've actually gone and made it less well, frankly, atrocious because this area here used to all be silver and then this area here was black, so they reversed it and they made it simple. And frankly, being able to grab all these buttons, they're relatively easy to see. It's not such a bad thing. And there really is only like a dozen buttons here, which is awesome. There is one more thing, and that is overall seating position. It's pretty good, except for this. See the steering wheel? It doesn't go back and forth. It only goes up and down. Oh well. Hey, look, Nissan's going to totally redo this vehicle. I'm sure they're going to address that issue. What's your speed, Nathan? Um, just under 50 miles per hour, and I'm climbing a little bit now. Yeah, come on, come on, truck. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Are these big toy mirrors slowing us down? I mean, they're big. They're nice, wonderful mirrors. Yeah, no, I like having them there. Yeah, I can actually great. see who's trying to green into me. Good yeah, smarter mirror. Same thing. company makes these and makes the Ford mirrors. Right? That's right. They're based in Australia, right? Yeah, made in Australia. I think Good it's mirrors. also so important to stress that before we had the Lincoln, which was potentially more aerodynamic than this horse trailer, right? Because now you're driving this big horse trailer into the wind, and that's going to slow you down some as well. Horse surface right. area. Yeah, and it's seven, seven uh, feet three inches wide. So you know your your Lincoln is probably six feet wide. Plus this is taller. It is a V nose, but yeah. Guys, I got to tell you, I love the fact that we're in the trucker lane here. I know the words. Not the fast lane, <laughs> or even the slow lane. I'm still at 50. I've got it pegged at 50. And that's well, not bad. And it's starting to climb again. Run. Yeah, yeah. We've done uh, quite a bit of our Are we halfway through? Uh, we're about halfway, yeah. I wonder how the other trucks will do. Uh, they obviously have more horsepower and more torque. But, you know, this is a 10-year-old truck. This came out in 2004, which really means it was designed like in 2000. So it's pretty impressive that it's doing this well with this much weight uh, up what is a very grueling and very, you know, now good test of these vehicles. It's a good thing that the tow haul mode has been keeping the power right between 4,000 and 5,000 RPM. So you're always in the RPM and you're not dogging in the engine. So right. it's been, it's right now it's at uh, 4,300 RPM. So it's not, you know, and it's not going for it. If I took it off hook tow haul mode, it would just fly all the way up to, you know, maximum RPM. I can yeah. tell you. Uh, you know, this is also the only one that isn't a full four door. This has these clam doors, and what that means is it's a little bit lighter, so it does have a little bit higher towing rating. Of course, we're exceeding that. The irony of this is, the shorter the truck, usually the more the tow, work, the more the, the more it can tow because it's lighter. Same horsepower, lighter truck. Yeah, but you want a longer wheelbase truck in order to maintain stability. Right, the short wheelbase will let the trader whip you a little more. You, have, you want a good balance there, too short of a, of a tow vehicle, and that trader will, will have its way with you. Absolutely. Now, Nathan, people are going to ask, or Ken, people are going to ask, why don't we have it in cruise control? <laughs> <laughs> well, all you'd be doing is this turning back on constantly. Yeah. yeah it's, it, it, guys, it'll pop out of cruise control when you're really pushing the engine like this. Is it still at 50, Nathan? Yep. Um, I'm on, like just a hair under 50 now. All right, now we're getting to the part where it gets very steep, this very end part, and we're about to uh, surpass the previous times that we got in the fastest trucks. We're about almost, I don't think you guys see this, at eight minutes, almost. But let's do um, a little, be quiet now, and I'll tell you what the uh, interior decibel level is. Here we go. Why don't you move it a little forward, Kent? Changes, but just under 70, about 69 decibels, which is surprisingly quiet. Yes, that's, when you think about it, it's done pretty good. 
Yeah, for a truck that's, you know, this is its 10th anniversary, so it hasn't had major changes in 10 years. And it does sound really good on the outside, so I bet you if we had a camera on the outside, it would be pretty badass. Although it's going to sound exactly the same all the way up the hill. It hasn't really moved much from 4,500 RPM. Yeah, that's that's impressive that it's held that, that RPM. How are the temperatures holding? Uh, the, the transmission temperature is below uh, the halfway mark, so it's fine. Uh, everything else is cool, too. Oil temperature is pegged dead center. So we have, we have stayed at about, what, 10 miles an hour under the maximum speed limit, give or take. Maybe 15, right? Now it's really slowing down. Are you still... Uh, all the way down. Wow. Yeah, this I haven't. And there's a big uh, Dodge. <laughs> it's a 3,500 truck, isn't it? <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right, guys, here we go. We're coming to the official end of the I Gauntlet, and I can tell 43, you... 43, 40... I can tell you we are a lot slower than we've ever gone before. Yeah, we're, we're dropping. We're this dropping. is it. Here we go. Let me know. Let me know when to hit stop. And now, so, 9.08. Nine minutes and eight seconds. And a little bit of change. Well, that's, is that where you called it? Yeah, yeah about a minute slower is what I was thinking it was going to be. So over a minute slower, but yeah. Uh, nevertheless, we have a new champion. Uh, temporarily. <laughs> you know what though? I mean, kudos to Nissan for building a truck that's strong enough to take this extra abuse. We know we're way over the amount, way over the amount. We're talking over a thousand pounds over what was recommended. And if you think about it, that's really impressive because this baby did it and it did it really on the hardest test that you could put it in. Yeah. yeah. gentlemen we're about to pop out of the Johnson Tunnel <laughs> add your own joke here we are <laughs> my joke you started it <laughs> I know I know <laughs> can you imagine how much fuel we're sucking down every mile it's it's daunting yeah. it is but then again we were going up the hardest section and we we're putting more strain on the truck than it's prepared to deal with so I mean yeah low but we've never thought that this truck was particularly efficient okay, hold on guys we're gonna okay, get the brakes going is it working doing the job yeah so yeah. we have a new champion of Ike Gauntlet 2.0 which is the Nissan Titan at nine minutes and eight seconds but I think that's gonna fall very quickly don't you Nathan yeah yeah that 40 ego boost man that thing is gonna have no problems compared to this one but you know what once again kudos to Nissan did well so next time on the fast lane truck Kent you get to drive the EcoBoost yes I gauntlet you ready to handle that I'm ready all right as always this is Roman and Nathan and Kent mr truck.com reporting for the fast lane car thanks for watching the fast lane truck fast lane truck because cars are horses <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember come back next time when the Ford takes on the Ike gauntlet <laughs>